Welcome back. A few weeks ago, I talked to you about going to the Global Leadership Summit as a substitute for my uh, video blog of uh, kind of July time frame. And we went, uh, about 15 of us went from to Comics and Actress and had an awesome time. Many people had gone many years, like myself, and there was a number of first timers who just walked away, kind of blown away with all the different things. So I thought, I'm going to take what we learned in two days, kind of my favorite learnings over two days, and knock it down to about three minutes for you. So um, there was a lot in that two days, and if you talk to different people, they all learn different things. But here are kind of my favorite takeaways. Um, Cheryl Sandberg from Facebook talked, and she had a couple of things that I really liked. One was to hire the skills you're going to need. Don't hire the skills that you need today. So look forward to what are you going to need later, hire the skills. The other thing she said, which was interesting, unrelated, is that um, you're responsible for the good that you don't do. So we all think about the things that we do and we feel all good about them, but what if our purpose was to do more? You know, we're responsible for the things that we don't do. Bill Hybels, who leads the summit, um, gave a talk. He always opens it up, and he said a couple of things that really struck me. One was that the highest value a leader can have is the value of humility. The other thing he talked about was the civility code that he tries to live by at uh, his church. And I think we as an organization actually live by the civility code really well. There were kind of five points to it. One is well, we greet and acknowledge each other. We say hi as we pass in the hallway. We say please and thank you. We treat each other equally and with respect. We're direct, sensitive, and honest. And then finally, we address incivility when it does occur. And as I said, I think this is something we really do well. We hire for that, and we actually have fired for people not acting like that. Cheryl Sandberg had another thing that struck me. You know, she dealt with a, a terrible situation a few years ago with the death of her husband. And she's written a book called Option B, and it's kind of dealing with grief. And I've been really fortunate. I haven't dealt with a lot of grief. And she said something that really struck me, though, um, because I never know what to say to people who are going through grief. And she said, in general, when she came back to work at Facebook, people tried to ignore her and tried to avoid her because they didn't know what to say. And she said, you know what? We really need, when we're dealing with grief, is just for people to be there, for just people to show up. I mean, so many times we say to somebody, hey, let me know what you can do, or let me know what I can do. And most people never say, well, do this or that. But if you just show up and do something, people generally appreciate that. Cheryl and Brian Stevenson talked about something in, in the way that we judge people. And I think we naturally judge people for what we see. But what we don't always do is take time to understand their story. And when we understand somebody's story, what they do, the way they behave, the way they have become, the person that they are, might make a lot more sense and we might have a lot more empathy for them. You know, I was watching an episode of West Wing last night and um, I'm a little behind because it's a you know, show that's no longer available. And it was an episode about the daughter of um, the Secretary of State. She uh, was photographed with her boyfriend in bed, so it wasn't a good situation. The photographs went all over the place, and they caught the person that spread them. And she wanted to talk to the guy. And so the guy was kind of remorseful and you know, kind of took her through things. And he said to her, he goes, I don't know what you expect from me. You know, because he kind of knew he'd done wrong. And she said, you know, I just wanted to understand. I wanted to be able to understand you for who you are, not for the one thing you did that was you know, unforgivable. And it, it really made me think about this thing from, that Cheryl and Brian said, which is, so often we judge somebody on what they do, but we don't understand their circumstances. So if we take time to understand people's stories, we're going to understand better how to manage them, how to motivate them. We're going to understand more of who they are and why they're where they are. Sam Adeyemi, I think I said that correctly, said something about recruiting that's pretty good too. And that is, we don't attract who we want, we attract who we are. So when you look at that from a recruiting standpoint, you know, we, we're going to attract who we are, not who we want. And that's good and bad. So the bad part about that is if we're not careful and you're doing the recruiting, you're going to get everybody just like you, and that's going to be a recipe for failure. But the other part about that is that if you wonder why you're not attracting great people, you might need to look in the mirror because great people want to work with great people. Right? So there's two sides of that that can be taken. First day ended with uh, one of my favorite people in the world, uh, Andy Stanley talked, and here was a number of things he said. One of the things he said that really struck me is that perhaps our greatest contribution to this world will not be something that we do, but someone we raise. And so for parents like myself, that's pretty important. It's kind of a get out of jail free card in case we don't do great things in life, but it, it really tells you how important it is on raising your kids. Another thing he talked about was in there, in there, he runs a church in Atlanta, and it grew incredibly fast. And he says, you know, 
we grew fast because we were uniquely better. And well, he went on to explain that they weren't just better. In other words, they didn't take what every other church was doing and did it the same way, just a little better. They did something different, unique, and better. So at the, at the cross-section you know, of, you know, growth is at the cross-section of unique and better. So when we can offer a product or service that's uniquely better, or you can, that's when you're gonna experience amazing success. Last two things he said I loved. You know, so many times people come to us with ideas and we normally start out with how because we're analytical and we think well geez how is that going to get done and he just said this simple saying replace how with wow so somebody comes to you with a crazy idea just say wow tell me more wow tell me more and he talked about he said listen women he said he said this is the advice i want to give you women and you married women because all of us men come to you with crazy ideas you need to quit saying how and how stupid their ideas are just say wow and here's the thing, most of the time we never follow through with our ideas anyway, so you have nothing to lose. And I love that, right? But think about what you can do to encourage people if you just replace how with wow. Maybe this idea is not good, but they'll probably realize it before they get to how. So you can just say wow. But maybe their next idea will be so good that it'll change your business, change your life. So replace how with wow. And the final thing he said was that closed-minded leaders close minds. So, as we, I complete this short video, this summary of you know, two days of amazing speakers, I encourage you to go out and purchase the um, Global Leadership Summit DVDs. Uh, you know, just think about that last thing. So if you have a closed mind and you haven't paid attention to any of these things because none of these ideas were directed towards you, it's likely that you're going to also close minds. And you're going to wonder why your people aren't creative, why aren't they coming to you with new ideas, why aren't they surpassing your expectations. Perhaps you're closing minds. Thanks a lot. I really encourage you to look up many of these speakers I mentioned and look into some of the videos. It's unbelievable resources available to you. And continue growing as a leader. Have a great day.